1904, the Islamic Department was established, predecessor to the Museum for Islamish Kunst, at a time when non-European cultures were popular with the middle classes. Islamic cultures and their artworks were also popular with collectors. A close link was thus forged between Jewish collections and the Islamic department. Collectors lent or gave the museum artworks, funded excavations and sat on committees. These donations, for example from Lottie von Mendelssohn Bartholdi, Alfred Kasserer and Edward Arnhold, were vitally important in growing the museum's collection. The items on loan enabled the museum to draw in more visitors and cover new topic areas. In 1932, it even held a special exhibition, exhibiting almost exclusively Jewish collections. The Nazis were no longer interested in the participation of Jewish citizens. They were pushed out of public life and ever new discriminatory rules were imposed. From December 1938, Jews were completely banned from visiting museums. Jewish museum staff had already been dismissed by this time. What happened to Jewish collections back then is little spoken of to this day. Harassment during the Nazi period forced many Jews to sell their property. Many art collections were auctioned off at far below their value. It is not known whether works came into the museum in this way, but it is now being more actively investigated because, even decades afterwards, much is still unclear. This is partly due to missing or destroyed sources, but the museum regards its history as being important and it knows exactly what it owes the Jewish collectors. What can a society that nowadays talks so much about belonging and sense of community learn from this? For the Museum for Islamish Kunst, it means negotiating how to integrate the perspectives of Jewish people and others who were affected, how to deal with knowledge gaps, and how to actively promote social diversity, both today and in the future. <laughs>